Good evening and welcome to the Movements Against State-Controlled Internet in Turkey. Uh, your presenters are uh, Zeda and Barış. And the <coughs> Signal Angel has one question. Does, um, how many of you do speak Turkish? Okay, so it's four people. Um, you can ask questions anytime, um, but if you want to do so, or if you do so, please uh, come to me. I have a microphone, or go over there to Tatiana, who also has a microphone, and <coughs> talk into the microphone. Otherwise, the people on the stream won't be able to hear you. Thank you, and welcome to uh, presenters. <laughs> I uh, will go with the introduction. Good evening. Good <laughs> evening. Right. Um, well, our talk, um, I think the title does a good job of what we want to talk about. Internet censorship is a concern that is growing in many parts of the world. Uh, the Internet is a global infrastructure, yet its regulation and control is done in local contexts, in local, using local strategies. At the same time, what we see is that the same strategies get imported and exported across countries. We will try to show a little bit of the example of how Internet is being censored in Turkey, the terminology that is used, the legal codification and the not-so-legal codification of that. Um, and we will try to use that as a starting point to talk about global strategies. What can we do about this, these local controls, and how can we act against them globally? Um, Turkey hit the news in 2007 when they blocked access to YouTube. It was one of the biggest mistakes they made. If you want to censor the internet, you don't start with the biggest site. Um, shortly after they um, blocked access to certain Google services, they used uh, different forms, sometimes DNS, sometimes IP blocking. And this was rather worrying for me. I don't live in Turkey myself. Um, and I was getting all these bad news. And there was a moment where I started getting some good news and saw some pictures of people on the streets and noticed that there are people who are actively organizing and doing something about this. And in September, I had the pleasure to meet some of these people. Barış is one of them. We were actually going to be four. Two of us are not here tonight. Um, well, in spirit they are. <laughs> so what we'd like to do is talk about what has happened, talk about how there has been resistance and how this has succeeded and sometimes failed. And then um, we'll talk a little bit about the problems, where do they lie in the context of Turkey. But then we'll try to zoom out and see what we can do all together. Thank you. Uh, hello, I'm Barış. Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, our small organization uh, what we do and what we face in Turkey uh, about technology and internet problems. Uh, the outline is first who we are and what we do. Uh, then uh, I'll talk about the situation in Turkey to introduce uh, you. Uh, then a short history of internet freedom in Turkey. And then uh, the problems uh, we, we have enumerated. Uh, first, who we are. Uh, we are called Alternative Bilishim. Uh, we are part of these movements, a small part of these movements. Uh, it's Alternative Informatics in English. Uh, a small network of researchers, engineers, as, as well as users uh, for uh, finding alternative ideas and solutions on uh, politics and social consequences of technology, as well as technical means uh, to approach these problems. Uh, we are distributed uh, to uh, several web pages now. Uh, uh, some of them are blogs, some of them are uh, Turkish uh, and English content. I uh, made both two of them that contains English content. Uh, this is how uh, we were founded. Uh, first was that uh, I were uh, working with uh, some researchers about digital game culture. Uh, and uh, they came up with this book on digital game industry and uh, uh, digital game reader uh, that compared to traditional games, etc. Uh, and uh, they went to uh, more to new media in general uh, and uh, Facebook, how it's used in practice in Turkey uh, and uh, about uh, hate speech and hate crimes uh, in Turkey, uh, 
especially nationalist ones. Uh, then there were also other bloggers uh, researching and uh, sharing uh, what they know and what they uh, see. Uh, and we somehow met each other and uh, Ali especially helped us. Uh, he's a freelance web developer. Uh, he couldn't come here because he has problems with his clients. <laughs> uh, and here is Mutlu Binark, uh, the digital game and new media research. Uh, Özgür Uçkan, uh, about internet censorship. Uh, and uh, we somehow formed a network uh, through a mailing list. Uh, and what interests us? Uh, freedom to online expression, freedom to access information, uh, freedom to create, share online content, state control, online censorship surveillance, as well as free software, creative commons and copyright issues, and creative industries like digital games uh, and uh, economy politics, etc. But as far as we can uh, go in that direction. We are uh, now nearly 50 members. We communicate through our mailing list online. Uh, we communicate to participate in conferences, sometimes mass release. It changes. Uh, we publish statements on government policies, sometimes. <laughs> then uh, organize meetings to uh, discuss some hot issues at times. And publish free ebooks whenever uh, the content comes available. Uh, here are some of the events that we participated in. The Internet Conference in Turkey, it's an annual conference that includes uh, people from technical side, social side, sharing their papers uh, in Turkey. Uh, in 15th of May, there was an uh, mass rally, enormous mass rally, don't touch my internet, we'll come to that later. Uh, we participated in the May Day in 2011. Uh, there was this Labour Start conference uh, in which labour unions uh, discuss how to use new media to organize themselves, uh, to form networks. Uh, and there is also sometimes seminars or meetings about digital games. Uh, we are especially interested in game jams uh, and uh, such events that organize new communities of developers. Uh, and there was also this alternative media festival, which was an alternative to some uh, mainstream uh, media, new media event that was uh, commercial oriented. So uh, I'll give some examples of what we did. Uh, for example, uh, last year we made a street declaration to support WikiLeaks uh, and it was near the beginning of the foundation of association. We are nearly one year old. Uh, next month, we uh, held a meeting to discuss WikiLeaks and uh, ongoing events in Tunisia and especially Egypt then. Uh, and we shared ideas. Uh, then from these ideas, we uh, wrote articles and collected them in an e-book, free e-book, uh, which also included some translations uh, and other articles at that time uh, on the subject. And uh, it's in Turkish, means Brave New Media, its name, uh, and it's available for LaTeX and PDF download. Uh, another issue was uh, the safe internet decision. Uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, we participated in the rally. Uh, we made a statement and discussion away against the decision. Uh, we, we was invited uh, to the consequent quasi-governance, so to say, meeting. Uh, and we made a statement to expose the intentions of this meeting, as well as a statement against their next uh, proposal, uh, and uh, looking at uh, what the, did they modify, and what did they imply. Uh, so here's an example of our statements uh, on the second uh, filter decision. Uh, discussing and criticizing it. You can find other English texts in, on our websites. And also, uh, we have to say that there are others. 
uh, uh, most of them are somewhat spontaneously created uh, and uh, they correspond to different periods of uh, struggle, we may say. Uh, but uh, there are many small uh, initiatives uh, for internet freedom. Uh, now we came to the situation in Turkey. Uh, we have to uh, say the two big milestones in Turkish history, uh, near history, uh, 1980 coup d'etat and 2002 uh, when AKP came in power. Uh, and in both of these periods, the Kurdish problem was continuing and uh, uh, warring with PKK since uh, 1984. Uh, tens of thousands of people die in two sides, etc. Uh, the mainstream politics is uh, divided between two poles, the conservative represented by AKP and secularism uh, represented by JHP. Uh, but uh, we have to say uh, conservatives uh, are protectionist, but secularists are also protectionist. Uh, I'll show you an example. Uh, so, uh, between, uh, in general, uh, until 2002, there was this old order with high inflation, continual uh, financial crisis, uh, war crimes being exposed, corruption, uh, and coalition governments, uh, somewhat unstable in uh, politics. And uh, now there is this new order, as it is seen, uh, with low inflation, economic growth, uh, it's unequal, but still growing. Uh, but uh, there is this all pervasive hegemony of AKP and Erdogan, and con conservative uh, transformation of culture. Uh, so here is the example about uh, the conservatives and secularists. Uh, these these are the categories uh, for blocking websites uh, and. Uh, conservatives came up with the first seven categories, and the secularists did not oppose the censorship, but added that eighth category, uh, crimes uh, against Atatürk. So they just signed their name, and uh, they are still for censorship. Ah, okay. Uh, provocation for committing suicide. Uh, sexual exploitation of children, uh, e to ease the use of drugs, uh, that's how they translate, supplying drugs uh, which are dangerous for health, obscenity, uh, uh, ambiguous, obscenity, uh, prostitution to provide place and opportunity for online gambling, and of course, uh, crimes against Atatürk. Uh, and they supply these uh, images in case we don't understand. Uh, so, child abuse, uh, material, and of course, crimes against Atatürk. <laughs> uh, so, we go on with the situation. Uh, we have to say that media, uh, before new media, is uh, traditionally censored, manipulated. They are used to that. Uh, the newspapers, TV is owned by a few big corporations holdings. Uh, and there is this radio television high council, uh, and they are finding anything they don't like, uh, some images, some words from the media. Uh, if you use some words, uh, you have to pay money afterwards, but uh, it's unpredictable. For example, uh, you can't say Kurdistan, but east of Turkey. You can't say police attacked, but intervened. Uh, guerrilla, not ter uh, but terrorists. Not captive, but convict, like that. Uh, uh, there are also some odd uh, things, like pistol pointed to camera, uh, or something against morality, or anything they come up with. Uh, and they don't warn before finding, and they can find enormous uh, amounts. So uh, uh, it's uh, a constant threat for media. Uh, an example is this, uh, Harakiri is a comic magazine and it was fined uh, 150,000 Turkish liras for uh, making people 
making Turkish people, especially, adventurous and lazy. Uh, that's their justification. So they have some kind of sense of humor themselves. <laughs> and harakiri, uh, <laughs> you know, it means suicide. <laughs> so uh, it was like a suicide, so the magazine closed down. OK. Uh, another example is Ahmet Şük, a journalist now in prison uh, for attempting to write a book uh, on uh, Fethullah Gülen sect in police department, which is called Imam's Army. Uh, and the prosecutor, uh, after arresting the author, tried to confiscate all digital copies of the book draft. It's draft because it's not published. Uh, they go to computers and they say, delete it from your email. Don't take pictures like that. However, it's leaked and it was published by uh, signs by many authors as an act of civil disobedience. Uh, now you can find this book everywhere. Uh, so some strange things happen. Uh, about telecom situation, uh, there is Turk Telecom, the single phone company. Uh, it was state institution, but it was privatized, and it owns all ADSL infrastructure. Uh, there is an authority, uh, and so-called independent authority, uh, on information and communication technology uh, for uh, regulating and controlling the telecom sector. Uh, but sector may include customers, which are citizens. We'll come to that. Uh, this is their website, the Turkish uh, abbreviation BTK, uh, safer internet, uh, blocking, etc. Uh, and this is uh, the presidency about uh, internet. They just have two announcements, and uh, uh, that page for denouncing web websites on eight categories. Not much content, but they work hard. Okay. Uh, uh, now we come to a short history of internet freedom. Uh, firstly, there are uh, three periods. Uh, the first period uh, was uh, they used blocking by court orders as a precaution. Uh, in the second period, they additionally could use administrative uh, decision for blocking websites. Uh, and in 2011, there came the, this safer internet service, which is filter. Uh, uh, we have to say those in power are never content with the current censorship mechanisms, so uh, they always introduce new ones, and they just want to block anything without any paperwork and without any effort, just by a click, uh, and uh, having to report no one. Uh, and all these mechanisms, of course, work separately like backups. Uh, uh, the first period, uh, there was something to remember uh, earlier uh, when they attempted to enforce press law on the internet. Uh, uh, because to, if you have a magazine, you have to bring uh, its hard copies to apply for it. So if you have an internet web page, you should also print its hard copies uh, when you are updating your web page and apply to the government institution. Uh, of course, it was nonsense, it couldn't be applied, but uh, even the fact that it was uh, put forward uh, is telling. Uh, and until 2007, uh, the existing laws was used uh, to block websites through courts, court decisions uh, as a precaution, uh, and this included uh, uh, word, uh, websites like Word, WordPress and YouTube, uh, just because of one page of content, whole domain is blocked as a precaution. Uh, and uh, as a result, everyone gained practical knowledge to change DNS and use web proxies when needed. <laughs> uh, huh, yeah. <laughs> 
uh, there's an interesting statement by the Prime Minister Erdogan. Uh, he said, uh, I'm using YouTube, why don't you? <laughs> 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 when it was blocked. Uh, so this was what we saw when we tried to go into a blocked web page. Uh, the access to this web page uh, is blocked by court decision. And there was uh, uh, some websites began to uh, use this image, blocking their own websites. And uh, with the same font and design, uh, this site is blocked by its own decision. <laughs> Uh, this, uh, hundreds of web pages uh, joined to this action, and uh, they became this uh, one of those moments I talked about, censure, censure, until they got bored, of course. Uh, <laughs> uh, in the uh, for the second period, firstly they made a preparation. Uh, using news propaganda to create moral panic on uh, child abuse, child pornography, uh, which is a, a non-problem, but it became a problem through uh, media manipulation. Uh, then they uh, introduced a, a infamous law, uh, 5651, overnight. Uh, no one was uh, informed about how it was prepared. Uh, and in this law, uh, Parliament uh, authorizes ICTA to block websites in those eight categories, including obscenity. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, crimes against Atatürk. Uh, and they also uh, give uh, administrative blocking, uh, in addition to court precautions, uh, on uh, obscenity and child uh, pornography. Uh, but we have we have to uh, uh, say that uh, this list does not include hate crimes uh, and hate speech. That's also an important thing not to miss. Uh, as a result of uh, this censorship law, as we call it, uh, a platform platform against censorship was formed uh, and organized a rally, a first internet freedom rally. Uh, in which 5,000 people came up. Uh, it was... Uh, people usually rally it, but uh, not as cheerful as this one. Uh, this was something new. Uh, as you can see, uh, the images and uh, slogans that was used. Uh, then, <laughs> after uh, then, we get uh, at February 2011 uh, the first decision to uh, uh, deploy filters for the internet. Uh, but we didn't know un until a, uh, a few months later when a journalist found it out and uh, exposed it. And after that, uh, there was an enormous reaction. Okay, we'll come to that. Uh, first, what is filter? It's called safe internet service. Uh, ICTA made a decision uh, to force uh, ISPs uh, to deploy uh, filters free from charge uh, under profiles, uh, standard domestic child family. These four profiles. Uh, for all internet users in Turkey. Uh, and also it uh, authorized itself to uh, fully determine the content of these filters. Uh, if you don't want to use a filter, they say, okay, you use the standard profile. But uh, that was suspicious because if I don't want to use the filter, why is it a profile? And we uh, interpreted it uh, as uh, being a mandatory filter. You always have to be inside a profile, which means that terms of that profile can change in the future. 
because it's something called a name by the state. Uh, and as a result, uh, uh, the second uh, censorship law uh, creates an enormous reaction. It, somebody opened a Facebook event and uh, 600,000 people attended uh, virtually and uh, 60,000 people attended really uh, in Istanbul and also hundreds of people in tens of other cities. Uh, so it was really a spontaneous uh, reaction, a one-time reaction, but nevertheless, uh, you can see this one is Istanbul, uh, Istiklal Street full of people. Uh, and uh, you can see the attitude changed a bit. <laughs> <laughs> And you can uh, even see from the faces that it has changed. <laughs> People get uh, angry now. Now we are angry. Uh, after that, it, uh, they held an internet council meeting, uh, which we call a pseudo governance meeting, uh, in which uh, this internet council uh, is called uh, only a few times a year for these types of meetings uh, to uh, ask uh, our ideas and take into account people, etc. Uh, so we, we was also invited to that meeting and told what we wanted, what we are against, etc. And uh, uh, all the people uh, was against that decision, uh, those who were invited. But uh, after the meeting, they wrote a report uh, fully ignoring uh, what was uh, discussed in the meeting, and they just manipulated things. Uh, this is the second decision, which became a draft now, uh, on the August of 2011. Uh, and uh, they gave 10 days for us to give our opinions uh, for for them to take into account. Uh, in this draft, uh, it's interesting changes were made. The standard and domestic profiles were dropped. Uh, in fact, domestic profile was also nonsense because it only allowed servers inside Turkey, uh, which is nothing, practically. Uh, but, uh, it's interesting that uh, still they propose that type of thing. Uh, uh, it could be the, the dreams. So uh, in the decision text, the wording was changed so that filter word was changed with lists. Uh, so that uh, try to make us harder to call it a filter. Uh, they uh, formed an advisory council uh, which uh, did not really have authority. Uh, and ISTA was the, still the single authority to, de to determine the filter contents. Uh, and as a result, uh, in November 2011, they deployed this filter. Uh, it includes two filters, the child filter with a white list uh, and a family filter with a black list. Uh, under the name Safe Internet. Uh, so ICTA uh, decides uh, what a child should and can see uh, on the internet and uh, what a family uh, shouldn't or uh, must not see. Uh, it's weird. Uh, and we applied to the Council of State for uh, its cancellation because it has no legal basis. It's just a decision, not a law. Uh, and they exceed their authority. Uh, and there's lack of regulation for webmasters whose uh, websites are blocked under different filters. And uh, it's a threat to freedom in general. And this is the third and last decision. 
uh, which was the final uh, deployment. Uh, this is a web page that you can query your website. For example, uh, I queried Facebook.com, and uh, families can see it, but children cannot see it. Uh, and also, in family filters, there is an option for disabling social media, disabling games, uh, etc., and disabling chat. Uh, so there are also other points to make. Uh, there was this data protection law, uh, which was proposed to parliament several times and became a never-ending story over five years uh, because they, uh, people want exceptions and the exceptions uh, don't end. Uh, and just for show, uh, it's also strange, uh, a data, legis uh, data protection legislation was made that relied on this non-existent law. So this was written, it exists, but it's invalid because there is no law. But if someone, some European asks, uh, where is your data protection, here is this legislation. So, uh, and uh, there is this national crypto bylaw uh, in 2010 that requires you to give away any encryption mechanism and private keys you may happen to use. I, I think we, we might turn this back at the governments. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, this, this, just this month, uh, WikiLeaks spy files exposed uh, several DPI companies, tracking companies, and it included one Turkish company involved in intercepting online communication, and it's called uh, Inforcept. Here's their website. Uh, and after this expo uh, exposure, they uh, put on their website a statement, uh, we are 100% Turkish, uh, we are not foreign, etc., as a uh, defense, so they are national uh, protection. Uh, and sometime later, the web page turned into English and the statement was removed. Uh, then uh, there is this uh, National Network Tracking Center, uh, a secret project by ICTA with a company C2 Tech, and uh, they cooperate at least with Microsoft, uh, that we somehow know. Uh, we uh, made an information request to ICTA about DPI technologies, and it was denied because it was outside the limits of our right to know. Uh, so it's government secret. Uh, we do it, but we don't tell you. And this is the company, Deep Packet Inspection, Lawful Interception. That's it. And it's also interesting, a document uh, where an attorney general is requesting from court tracking and recording of emails and MSN of someone through uh, ICTA some program. Uh, I showed you the web page of ICTA, you remember? Okay. Uh, now the problems uh, that we see related to internet freedom. Uh, first is the democratic legal process, uh, telecom ownership uh, state, the culture on technology, uh, Linux uh, contain, being contained in official discourse, political culture, education for jobs. Uh, firstly, uh, the problem is with how laws are made and how they are enforced. Uh, practically everyone is excluded from this process, except some NGOs that are not really NGOs anymore. Uh, political action, uh, oppositional political action is punished in general. Uh, you remember the journalist, writer. Uh, no one trusts in the uh, judiciary system except members of the party in power. Uh, def there is, they have this de facto authority uh, based on ideology uh, and not on uh, lawful justice. So they rely on this uh, 
pride of Turkishness, national things. Uh, and information is manipulated, uh, and independent media is punished as well. So this is the most important central problem. Uh, secondly, uh, the one with telecom ownership uh, of the infrastructure. Uh, Turk Telecom practically monopolizes the internet uh, infrastructure. Uh, it was privatized in 2005, uh, sold uh, mostly to Saudi owners. Uh, there was a worker strike uh, at, at 2007 uh, that after the effects of privatization, of course, uh, that triggered a debate on government support on this monopoly, because uh, a monopoly is uh, more easily controlled by state, it's prone to state control. And there's also uh, this problem for uh, net neutrality, because it, they are not uh, just infrastructure, but they are offering services in several domains uh, with uh, their companies. So. Uh, that's also part of ownership problem. Uh, thirdly, uh, the culture uh, is, in general, a consumerist relation to technology uh, due to uh, aggressive marketing of gadgets uh, through advertisements. Uh, and uh, usually, uh, they are their standard uses uh, for entertainment or status symbols, etc. Uh, which creates a superficial relation to technology uh, and there's a lack of motivation to have real control over the gadgets uh, using their real power, uh, which uh, I think uh, changes in times of crisis as uh, we saw in uh, Tunisia and Egypt. Uh, but we have to be prepared. Third is uh, Linux uh, being inside official discourse. Uh, we can think that Linux promoters could serve as an alternative culture on technology uh, using its potential, uh, but uh, usually uh, the people fear uh, to participate in politics and only target Microsoft, etc., uh, a professional position uh, instead of a political one. And uh, as a result, uh, it's now officially integrated into uh, national pride and national security discourse. Uh, you can see Pardus. Uh, it is a Turkish uh, Linux distribution. Uh, and uh, the team is located in, inside the most high security uh, base uh, in uh, Turkish state. Uh, so that's come. Fifth problem is uh, political culture, the opposition uh, no movements, especially leftist and Kurdish movements. Uh, they are trying to create a third front uh, against the usual polarization of mainstream politics. Uh, of course, they can communicate and organize on the internet, uh, but uh, they have their traditions. Uh, and their uh, uh, community uh, habits, and they lack the capacity and enthusiasm to use technology uh, to its potential. Uh, and in practice, online communication and propaganda, uh, which is uh, really important, uh, secure communication and propaganda to uh, uh, the internet users, uh, but they are limited to standard uses, using, uh, creating fa Facebook pages or uh, more or less simple web pages uh, because uh, they are not used to work with uh, developers, experts, admins, uh, some kind of productive, creative structure. Uh, and the community structure is somehow incompatible with uh, the production uh, needed for using the, these new technologies. Uh, and sixth, uh, and the last thing we say is uh, the education uh, for jobs. 
as it's uh, becoming. Uh, in fact, education is praised by families. Uh, technical knowledge is praised by society in general. Uh, but uh, somehow students feel indebted to family and society, and upon graduation, they become a white color worker, uh, fully dedicating herself to her company and job, and as far as the economy is uh, also growing. Uh, and uh, somehow, uh, jobs become the center of education, and universities abandon spaces for shared creativity. They turn into technical schools for jobs, to, uh, for, because families are demanding uh, education for jobs, and schools are supplying for their demand. Uh, there are several uh, private universities. They use billboards, advertisements. Uh, and uh, as a result, technical knowledge is still remains to be owned by a small minority, while the majority expects to use it uh, without in-depth knowledge. So uh, we supposed to know, and they just supposed to use. Uh, now we... <laughs> I'll yeah. <laughs> we come to the final part. Yeah, so thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well, um, thanks again. And yeah, so I guess uh, we've been discussing the last uh, few days that we managed to be together again about what could be steps forward. And also, like, on the one hand, to think about steps forward in Turkey, but also one of the reasons we came to CCC was to meet with the communities that are represented here and to build networks and think about this as a global problem that we have to address locally, but also globally, and to also exchange strategies, because obviously the governments are doing that too. Um, so, um, here's some ideas, and actually there are other questions to you, um, either during the discussion session or afterwards. We'll also be here the next few days. So, one of the, I think for the legal uh, problem that you were talking about, one of the things that we definitely needs to happen is procedural transparency. Um, I mean, one thing that we could consider is, is it reasonable to call or to invoke international legal frameworks of which Turkey is a signatory? Is this a way to push the government to actually go through um, or to respect some of the things that they signed? Is this a reasonable thing or does this actually become a kind of, you know, Turkey kind of pushing back saying EU is imposing again or Europeans are imposing again their imperialist values on us, etc. So that's a strategy that needs to be discussed carefully and at the same time maybe pushed. Um, and other forces that, you know, it's a lot of the work that you guys are doing and Özgür uh, and Yaman Akten is of asking for legal procedures to be done properly and also transparently. I think those are the local ways of going about this. Um, there's the question of civil society participation. I think that's all often a double-edged uh, thing. On the one hand, what happens if civil society participates in making the new list uh, or the new filter? I mean, is this the direction we want to go? Or how, how should we actually negotiate the terms of participation, especially because participation usually means somebody invites and you go and in, on their terms? Um, then there's the question of what kind of fundamental rights should we be articulating? Should there be a fundamental right to access to information? Um, or should there be fundamental limitations with respect to, let's say, um, deep package inspection or filtering? Like, should there, is that the kind of demands that we should be making and how should these be articulated? Um, these are, of course, still on the political and, and um, more legal um, yeah, vector sort of thing. And then there's the question of technical. Um, I think one of the port points you were making kind of along the lines of as these filters become technical systems, they go beyond the legal system. So they actually create uh, another system that is very difficult to regulate and, and make transparent or even like to make sure that they conform with the legal rules. So is it reasonable to ask for tr technical transparency? What would that mean? Um, is it that we want open source systems? What does it mean to have an open source filtering system? I mean, is it, I mean some, yeah. Hard questions, I think. Um, and then, uh, and I think where I hope that we can also rely on the communities here um, are technical strategies until we hit a better situation, which is how can we circumvent um, the existing application of filters um, 
and, and other forms of control of our internet freedoms? Um, what kind of technologies can we offer? I mean, one of the things that we didn't mention is that in the, in the legislation proposals, it also says that web proxy usage is illegal. So um, they actually do cover that. And so what do you do with that kind of thing? Um, what are reasonable ways to do it? And then to also ask, like, so to have mechanism for watching the watchers. So see what they're doing, to see what kind of proxies you use and you get into trouble. Like that kind of requires a constant monitoring of what you can do to circumvent the systems and, and when you get caught, what happens and informing people about that. Um, and that means that we have to reverse engineer the systems that they're introducing. And I think for that, we definitely need international technical expertise. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's our talk. That was quick. <laughs> um, my name is Marietje. I'm a member of the European Parliament uh, working on internet freedom, but also foreign policy, including enlargement, and so Turkey. Uh, and I thought it was interesting in terms of what you said about um, invoking international treaties to keep Turkey to promises. And then you mentioned perhaps there would be a counter argument of so-called European colonialism. Um, or something of that nature. I, I think you said something like that. Yeah, they like come that. up with words all the time. Yes, uh, and I think it's, it's important not to fall into that trap. I think you can always hold governments to their own commitments and that that's important. And Turkey has made plenty of those commitments internationally, which it's bound by. Uh, and the EU accession process is, of course, not imposed on Turkey. Uh, perhaps on the contrary, many Europeans would say. Um, and about six months ago I asked a question to the European Commission whether we should consider internet freedom as one of the accession criteria because at the time that these accession criteria were made internet freedom was not yet such an issue but free speech press freedom human rights rule of law of course are and the Commission confirmed that indeed internet freedom is an accession criterion mm -hmm. so perhaps this community can use that uh, as an argument um, one more suggestion, which is uh, about representation in Turkey. Um, I'm not sure if everybody is aware that it's very difficult to be represented on the political level. There is a threshold of 10% in order to be uh, a political party that's represented. So in politics, but also in civil society organizations, a lot of Turkish people or people in Turkey are not represented. Absolutely. And in Brussels or in international platforms, language is a big problem. Uh, and perhaps there can be clever ways in which technology can help quickly translate essential issues. Because, for example, the book, uh, Imam's Army, is not available in English yet. Mm -hmm. uh, the book by uh, some other people, uh, Hanifa Avce, for example, has not been available in English. And a lot of these uh, documents by the Internet Regulating Authority would be very, very helpful to have in English. I spoke to them in Brussels. And I've tried to ask the sharpest questions I could, but if I cannot read their words exactly for what they are, it makes it very difficult to hold them accountable. So I think that would be a huge asset to cross-translate Turkish-English, perhaps find a mechanism uh, together here. And I'll end there. Could, we can stay in touch. Uh, I think it could be helpful. Do you want to say something? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, European uh, imperialism is more of an ideological manipulation uh, to keep people content than an argument. And uh, the fact that there are no translations, uh, it seems that it was successful and we have to fight it. Good evening. Uh, I'm Okin from Telecomics. Um, first, I want to state that you're doing a really great job fighting this uh, censorship system. Um, I want to add two points. Uh, you talk about um, if people must ac uh, have access to information. Uh, I think uh, everyone should access every kind of information in any, uh, any type of support or format. 
and without being um, uh, armed for that. Uh, you, ca you, you cannot ask uh, to, uh, the gov to the Turkish government to let you access to every kind of, inf of information if they're going to monitor you and just uh, log what you're doing uh, and uh, when you're going to check on Facebook, etc. Uh, so that was a, that's the first point. And the second point, you can ask, you, you must ask for having the, uh, the exact criteria of a, of a blacklist, of a blacklisting of a website. You must know which websites are blocked and why they are blocked. And I think you, you should continue on this, on this path and ask them and force them to, uh, to have all, uh, all those data. And I just want to add you, if you, if you want help or if you want to discuss with problem, we have, we have a table here, we've got our IRC support, so you're welcome. Hello. Um, we have a question in the chat. Um, you said that 50,000 people demonstrated against the censorship in Istanbul in May 2011. As far as I remember, he says, this was not transported into German media and as far as I know, in no other media as well. So who supported the demonstration? How was it organized? And how can other people um, support this, uh, this, um, the protests from outside of Turkey? It was really spontaneous, just a Facebook event, and uh, uh, th th there was these a few friends uh, admining uh, a page, uh, uh, admining a Facebook page, and they got this idea of let's uh, create an event, don't touch my internet, and they wrote uh, uh, a, a statement, uh, an invitation for people. And thousands of people stream there. Uh, Facebook thought it was spam, etc. <laughs> <laughs> they don't take into account uh, the Turkish uh, people's <laughs> numbers and speed. Uh, so uh, those friends found themselves in a position to uh, organize uh, a rally, and they uh, went to these other people that uh, organized the previous rally, and they together just called people and they came up. So <laughs> uh, I'm a witness. <laughs> so it happened, but uh, it was, uh, yeah, uh, somehow. Uh, coverage. The new media, uh, media coverage was low, no? Yeah. I, I thought that it, it is manipulated, so. Yeah, I mean, there was barely media coverage of the demonstrations. I mean, in Turkey as well, so not just in Germany, but it was not covered also by the mainstream yeah. media in Turkey. Uh, yeah. And also, it was before general elections. So uh, media manipulation is uh, especially important at that time. <laughs> so. First, I want to congratulate you to your activities in Turkey. It's a very good thing in my eyes. Congratulations. Um, my origins are from Iran. I came back there two weeks ago for a visit, and I saw there a system which is much more worse than what you have in Turkey. But I think it's only to shift the ruler on the one or on the other side. And um, the one thing I, I think you can do is uh, to enforce your people to use more and more the internet communication in the in the east in the in the oriental cultures they love to communicate with their families and so and that's the the thing you can put the whole power on it and give your expertise and what i did was to to install as much linux systems and tor systems that i could in these two weeks in iran <laughs> and <laughs> the, and i think I think uh, what we thought about um, the argument about the, um, that they don't want to join like the, uh, to the European imperialism, there is a lot of things in the Oriental culture which is coming from freedom as well, for instance, the, Suf the Sufi culture and so on. And you can bind this with the freedom of internet and tell the people that there is in their own culture a uh, culture of freedom and that they, that they have to support it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your activity.
We, we must be more internationalist. <laughs> Hello. Um, just two practical um, observations. First of all, um, publishing blacklists um, is always a bestseller. Um, it, it, it was when, when it was um, just the index of the Roman Catholic Church, it was like the first book catalog, and it was also when uh, WikiLeaks um, published uh, the blacklist um, of the Australian government. So um, if you have a way to get it out, then that's, that's sure to be um, recognized and they will get a lot of media attention. But that also, um, the problem is how to get them out um, without being criminalized. And that's, that's a very, very problematic situation because uh, every activist faces. And um, when, we, when we look to Europe, it's not only Turkey or Iran, it's also the activists in Europe. Because um, the, the fundamental rights we fought um, on a very basic um, real life level have not yet found their way into the internet culture and especially not in the minds of the politicians who make the decisions now and um, see what they, what they are doing um, years later. Thank you. In fact, I think there was a leaked blacklist of uh, over one million uh, websites uh, that was being used to filter internet cafes where uh, young people use. Uh, and it, uh, for example, included uh, organizations of gay, lesbian communities, etc. And we, we just looked at the latest proposal and they say that they're not going to provide the ISPs with the blacklist but the hash values, which, okay, one way function, but I mean, you match, you match, right? Like, I don't know, like, it's good. They don't know how to do security, which is good news, you know? Um, hi, I have two comments. Um, one is like uh, DNS filters are very interesting because they don't work very well with DNSSEC. So if you, include, if you start using DNSSEC on the ISP level uh, to protect the user and to protect the internet from criminals who want to attack your recursive DNS server, then these DNS filters <coughs> will actually say, you know, whoop, that domain was not valid, right? So your stop sign was not valid. This is very interesting. So I would recommend that you take a look at the paper published by Paul Vixie and a few others on how DNSSEC interferes with DNS filtering, actually vice versa, the other way around, DN filtering inter interferes with DNSSEC. The second comment that I have is um, in different countries in Europe, but also um, like Egypt and a few other countries, there are very interesting uh, community uh, networks and uh, wireless community networks most of the time. And I can give you an example, for example, um, Serbia, where you know people who want to play games put antennas on roofs from one building block to the other. They perform brilliantly, like a hundred Mbit or more, um, and it's sort of their private link. So you know if they don't want to have your inter uh, they don't want to give your, the, you, you the internet that you deserve, you know, you build your internet, right? And there's a workshop tomorrow in the evening, um, free networks uh, workshop, so I recommend any, anybody who is interested to go there. I want to say something interesting with DNS filtering. As I told you, everyone was uh, working around the DNS filtering and including the prime minister. So uh, for whom was the filter uh, used? Uh, I, I think it's interesting to ask this question because uh, people uh, were somehow content that uh, YouTube was uh, being filtered because it somehow meant that we don't need YouTube. We have our websites. We have our national pride. So uh, it's also somehow ideological. Uh, Okay. <laughs> Hi. Oh, yeah. Um, if your government is putting people to jail for writing books, you probably shouldn't use one, web, one hop web proxies. Have you seen how Tor works in Iran and China and these kind of countries, like bridges? Which you probably should use something a bit more sophisticated than one hop web proxies because yeah. it's, it's dangerous. It starts getting dangerous after a while. Yeah. And so, um, censorship equipment are getting quite trendy lately because of those conferences like ISS World and stuff. And 
everyone is buying DPI equipment and it's getting more and more hardcore. So you probably should get much better in circumventing censorship than, yeah. That's all. Yeah. In fact, uh, we, in alternative position, we want to uh, improve ourselves in technical side. We lack technical efficiency. Uh, we just take it easy <laughs> for now, but maybe sometime later uh, we'll need. Yeah, they are not taking three really easy though. Yeah. Jail. Yeah. yeah, they are not taking three really easy themselves. Yeah. Any more questions? So I see yeah, no I more. I mean, maybe just to comment on all of that, I, I think, I mean, there's so many elements to all of this. I think on the one hand, we definitely need like more civil society organizations. I mean, alternative politium is something people are doing on their free time. And, and I think those are always the best projects and all that, but it does mean, you know, it does mean that those people get depleted and burnt out eventually. Um, I think that goes to almost all the comments that are made, um, you know, even the translation thing. I mean, a lot of people can do this on their own time. And I think there's maybe ways of doing it more efficiently by creating a community for translations and stuff like this. And maybe we should work on those. Excuse me? Wiki books. Wiki books. Okay. Yeah. yeah of course. <laughs> but I mean, there's on the one hand, like crowdsourcing as a possibility, but I think we also have to think about developing infrastructure, like alternative infrastructures, and that means money at some point as well. But maybe just a side note. Bye. Zira, Varish, um, thank you for your talk and thank you for your great work. Give them a warm hand of applause. <laughs> Um, the next talk in this room will be at 8.30. It's going to be Bug Planet, uh, also on surveillance industry and uh, countries acting. And another announcement. Uh, um, the European Data Protection and the Internet of Things uh, will be simultaneously translated in room B04, which is the